Everybody comes to a point in their life when they want to quit. But it's what you do at that moment that determines who you are. See, I don't want to hear from people that tell me success is easy. I want to hear from the people who fought it out. Who went all 12 rounds with life and then got to the other side. See, I know that success and greatness take time. I mean, things happen. Any, anything can happen, you know, any given Saturday. Only thing I can do is go out there and just be the best that I can be, you know, and just leave it in God's hands. I know that my dreams and my goals, whatever it is that I want, is going to take time and it will not be easy. And I've learned, and maybe you've learned this as well, that it's not about what you want. Life is about what are you willing to put the work in for? What are you willing to stay up late and go to sleep early for? What sacrifices are you going to make for greatness? What sacrifices are you going to make to be somebody who changes people's lives, who's remembered for making an impact in serving people? What are you going to give up? Will you quit in the journey? I'm experienced now, professional. Jaws been broke, been lost, knocked down a couple of times. Bad! I done wrestled with an alligator. That's right, I have wrestled with an alligator. I done tussled with a whale. I done handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. That's bad. Only last week, I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. Bad dude. Bad. 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 You, George Fullman, all of you chumps are gonna bow when I whoop him. All of you. I know you got him. I know you got him picked. But the man's in trouble. I'm gonna show you how great I am. So I know the journey is something that actually doesn't end. And what we want, what we love, who we want to become, that's something that we've got to throw ourselves at, that we've got to give our entire lives to, because it takes a lifetime to build. See, I don't want to hear from the people who say it's easy. I want to hear from the people who work day in and day out when it's not easy, when it's not glorious, when it's not fun. Those are the people I want to hear from. Because those are the people who have determined and created their own reality. And those are the people I look up to. Who are the people you look up to? Who are you studying? What are the last three to four biographies, autobiographies that you've read of great people who push the envelope in life? who push their life and other people's lives forward. What are you feeding your mind? What do you tell yourself when you're about ready to quit? See, I tell myself I've got to keep going because right before the breakdown is the breakthrough and I know that when I quit, I'm about to have an epiphany. I'm about to meet somebody, have a new relationship, meet someone who can help me get to where I'm going, meet somebody else who's also striving for higher ground and we can connect and we can build. See, I don't quit. And I don't think you should quit either. Whatever it is that you want when you look into the mirror, whatever it is that you want when you think about first thing in the morning, whatever it is that you want that you can't get out of your head, that's not worth quitting for. And life is going to test you. That's all life is. It's going to test your patience. It's going to test your will, test your commitment, your dedication, your loyalty, your trust, your faith. It's going to test it. And how you respond to that test is going to determine the rest of your life. It's difficult, and I love it. Because it's the difficulties, the challenges, dealing with the fear, managing the anxiety that will turn you into something else, that will take you to the next level. See, I welcome the challenges. I welcome the pain. I welcome the journey.
The Bible says it is with the mind that we serve the Lord. It is with the mind that we serve the Lord. The mind is the battleground. It is the place where the greatest conflict is. There are more people in this room having trouble in their mind than there are people having trouble in their finances. The struggle is in your mind. This is why we have people who go to bed tired and wake up tired. Slept eight hours and you wake up still tired. The reason you wake up tired is that you got sleep but you didn't get rest. Your mind has been in turmoil all night long. You've been wrestling in your sleep. Have you ever woke up and your bed was wet? The bed is all torn just like you've been in a fight because your mind has not rested. Your body went to sleep, but your mind is still caught up in a warfare. Your mind is a battleground. Pet somebody and tell them the enemy is after your mind. Out to worry you to death, out to stress you to death, out to break you down, out to make you quit, out to make you think that you can't get up, out to make you give up on your dream. The warfare is in your mind. It's not in your checkbook. It's not in your savings account. It's not on your job. The fight that you've got to fight is in your mind. And if you whip it in your head, you can whip it in your checkbook. You can whip it on your job. You can whip it out of your children. But you got to try if you put as much time into working on winning as you put into thinking about losing, you'd already be a champion. Today is not about me. Today is about you. I know what it feels like to sit on a bench. I know what it feels like to get knocked down. I know what it feels like to have a hope and a dream and nobody believes in it but a few people. But here's what I know. If you wake up in the morning and cut off the news, and every single day you look like success and look like money, and every time you go into a home, you understand the power of likability. Every time you go into a home, you make sure you don't communicate. You make sure you connect. I guarantee you, all the time as you water that tree, all the time as you build that root system, all the time, I promise you, that tree will grow. And before you know it, you will have your own little personal harvest. And don't you quit until you're number one. I bust my ass training. I swear to you, you can't find a person that worked harder than I do because I was scared. I was scared of Eddie Brown and Stanley Shakespeare, the receiver that played before me, saying I didn't carry that that they gave me. They gave it to me as a champion. It was my responsibility to make it and keep it that way. It's time to make decisions that make you a legend. We see it every day. But the only difference, baby, we gotta stop quitting. We gotta stop giving up. All this TGIF, TGIF, it is now T-G-I-A. Thank God I'm alive. Who here remembers when they first realized they were going to die? That sense that behind all of this, the void is waiting. We have to live in the knowledge that the worst thing that can possibly happen, one day surely will. The end of all our projects, our hopes, our dreams, of our individual world. We each live in the shadow of a personal apocalypse. I'm fragile. I feel pain. I hurt. I open my eyes. I create. I conquer. I hold the power. I'm a thinker. I crave victory. I do not give up. I feel no fear. I fear no man. I'm an athlete, a warrior, an artist. Some of y'all been worshipped since you was in high school, so you don't really know how to grind. <laughs> like, you talk grind. Like, I, I love it. Like, I go into the weight room, and y'all playing like Pac. Y'all playing Biggie. Like, y'all all in it. 
Like you like, you like Pac, but you don't have the spirit of Pac. You like love Pac, you like listening to Pac, you like listening to Biggie, you like to talk about the grind, but you don't really know what the grind is like. I know what the grind is like. I started from the bottom. What is your bottom when you've been worshipped since middle school? You've been tall your whole life, big your whole life. They worship you so much now that you think it's about you. You don't even know what the grind look like. I'm from Detroit, homeless. Mama got pregnant with me at 17 years old, high school dropout. Took me 12 years to get a four-year degree. I'm coming now. It's in view. You finally made it to the big leagues, and now you want to chill? Now you got the big head? Now you can't grind? You here now. You here now, you finally made it. And this is where you, you break up? This is where you start chilling? This is where you get comfortable? You made it now. You made it now. You in the big leagues now. They watching you now. This is where you make it permanent. Yeah, I saw it, I saw it. Perfect, perfect. No, practice don't make perfect. Practice make permanent. permanent. This permanent, y'all. This is permanent. You can go wherever you want to go from here. It does not take talent. You don't have to be talented, right? You don't have to be gifted. You don't have to be the quickest, the strongest. You don't have to be the most intelligent to get to where I am. That's what you got to do. You just got to grind, though. Your grind, you got to outgrind. So many of you heard me say this. Your father, listen to me, might own a company. Your mama might be a millionaire. You might come from privilege. Your daddy might hook you up with a car. He might know people. He might be able to get you a job. But you will not outwork me. And what you have to decide in your position in the NCAA, you have to make a decision that nobody in this league in your position will outwork you. Listen to me. You better grow up and get to the point as a man that if you ever get beat, you better get beat by somebody that's just that's just purely more talented than you are. You better not ever get beat by somebody because you beat yourself. You have to take advantage of an opportunity of a lifetime in the lifetime of the opportunity. Let me tell you something, you sit in this room, you think you're going to be 18 for the rest of your life, you think you're going to be 19 for the rest of your life, you got an opportunity right now that you won't have five years from now. You have an opportunity right now that you'll never have. People say, why you grind so hard, E? I might not be the number one motivational speaker in the world five years from now. I got to get everything I can get right now, every book I can write. And listen to me, my school is being paid for by the athletic department. I'm hot right now. Right here, you may never get another one. Some of you, after this, there may not be another opportunity. Let me tell you what I tell athletes. The worst thing in the world is not growing up in poverty. The worst thing in the world is growing up in poverty and coming here and get worship and not taking advantage of this and you gotta go back to the hood. That's that's the worst thing that can ever happen to a bro. You better not lose this. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. Your grandma counting on you to do the right thing. Your mama counting on you. Your cousins, your brothers and sisters are counting on you to, to cash in on this opportunity. Everybody wanna be a beast. Everybody wanna be a beast. Until it's time to do what beasts do. Until it's time to do what beasts do. Everybody want to be a beast. Everybody got a lot. Tattoos of lions. Lions all on their Twitter face. Everybody got the lion thing now they tweet now. Rawr. But when it's time to practice, you ain't on beast mode. Let me say this and I'm getting out of here. Can I be real with y'all? Most of y'all think that a lion is who he is because of how ferocious he is when he catch that gazelle, when, when he catch that zebra. Can I be real with y'all? A part of being a beast just ain't eating a gazelle. A part of being a beast is the hunts. It's the hunt that they're excited about. They like to see the gazelles run. Then boom, they take off. Because real lions like to hunt. They love the process, the process, just as much as they love the prize. And some of y'all just want to score. You don't like the process. You're not in love with the process. A real man in the dark, when nobody's watching, he putting in work. A real man in the dark, when nobody's watching, he putting in work. A real man, when coach ain't even watching, he's studying film on his own. Because he's he loves the process. If you will be a champion, if you will be a beast, you're going to have to go through something. Ain't nobody going to hand you nothing. Ain't nobody going to hand you no championship. Ain't nobody going to hand you no title. So this is my year. I end. This is my year. Listen to me. Say, be phenomenal. This is it. 
I want you to chant it out. This is it. Be phenomenal or be forgotten. One, two, three. Be phenomenal or be forgotten. One, two, three. Be phenomenal or be forgotten. That's how. One, two, three. Be phenomenal or be forgotten. That's my time, guys. I do not believe that any of us have dreams that were not given to us for the purpose of accomplishing those particular dreams. If you feel you have something to give, if you feel that your particular talent is worth developing, is worth caring for, then there's nothing you can't achieve. So I applaud you for your dreaming, for your running towards your dream. I applaud you for believing in yourself because that's what life is about, stretching and challenging, looking for ways that you can begin to improve yourself. Not only is it possible for you to have your dream, but it's necessary, it's necessary that you go for what is yours in the universe. Logical, practical thinking says you can't do it today. But if you want to produce unreasonable results in your life, like living your dream and taking charge of your destiny, you've got to be an unreasonable person. When you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way it is. Your life is just to live your life inside the world, try not to bash into the walls too much. That's a very limited life. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact. Everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. Once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. If it's hard, why do people do it? Why do they go it? People who climb mountains. Why would a Nelson Mandela give up 26 years of his life? Why do people do that? Even though it's hard, it's worth it. It's worth it. The people who go after their stuff, what makes it worth it? It's got to be your passion. You got to love it. It's got to be what you are supposed to do. You do what it is you're supposed to. You're supposed to build something. You're supposed to create something. I don't know how to do it. Learn. Let me share something with you. History is being read, but it's also being written by people with imagination. Don't stop! Don't stop! Don't stop running towards your dream! Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. No matter how bad it is, or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. Live your life with passion with some drive. If you don't develop the courage to do that which has been given you to do, and you spend a lot of time going around trying to convince other people or trying to get their approval, what will happen is that you will lose your nerve and other people will convince you that what you're doing doesn't have any value and you'll give up on your dream. We go through life trying to seek security and not coming outside of our comfort zone and we take most of our stuff with us to the grave. In life you're either here today and you're gone today. And I'm saying that the fact that you're still here, that you're still breathing, you've got some more work, and you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself. So when you get up in the morning, that you can look yourself in the face and say, hey, I'm living my life on my terms. See, if you don't decide to act on your dream, if you don't decide to make a decision to live your life, 
if you don't decide to step into your fears, if you don't decide to say yes to your life, it will never work for you. Many of us never realize our greatness because we become sidetracked by secondary activity. We spread ourselves too thin, don't know how to say no, and we find ourselves doing all kinds of things and never ever have time to do those things that we need to do to work on ourselves. And then there goes a second, there goes another second, there goes another second, and we can't stop and hold time. And before you know it, you wake up one day and you're behind on your dreams and your bills. Ask your question, how much time do you have left? How much time do you have left? Decide that you're going to take some time to work on you, that you deserve that from yourself, that your life deserves. It's very important. You owe that to yourself. One idea can change your life. One idea can turn your life around. And as you convince you as you sell yourself every day, every day, every day, something happens for you. It will enable you to transcend yourself wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Do it with everything that you have. Develop the habit of giving more than what you're paid for. If there's something that you want and you're hungry for it, you've got to do whatever is necessary until. And when you give the best you can and that's not enough, you must do what is required. When you're hungry, you don't care about the facts. You don't care about the odds. When you step into your fears and continue to push yourself to go on, you begin to see things that have been standing there looking you in the face saying, I can't believe this has been here all this time. It's supposed to be difficult. If it wasn't difficult, then there'd be no growth. There would be no resistance. There'd be nothing to force you to grow stronger with. And that's why I say the most important reason, the most important thing, the most important gift that you receive by taking action, it's you growing stronger and becoming a stronger version of yourself through the challenges, through the resistance, and because it's hard. And don't give up on yourself. Don't throw the towel in so quickly. Many people give up on the one yard line. I want you to get to a place in your life that every mistake you make, every setback you get, right? Every obstacle that you don't, that, that you don't overcome, every barrier you can't climb. I don't want you to give up, but I want you to fail forward. Every mistake you make has to be another stepping stone, another building block. And you've got to learn how to tune out the critics outside and the critic inside. And since I'm going to do this, I'm going to harness my will, and I'm not going to let anything stop me. I deserve this. See, the last chapter to your life has not been written yet, and it doesn't matter about what happened yesterday. We don't give up. We don't surrender. We don't quit. We see differently. Our perspective is different. And because our perspective is different, our outcomes are different. Our rewards are different. get it twisted. E.T. get tempted just like everybody else. But where I come from, everybody don't get this shot. Have you lost your mind? You know how hard I work to get here? I put in too many hours. I sweat too much blood, too much tears. I worked hard to get here. Didn't nobody give me this. My daddy wasn't there for me. Are you hearing me? I didn't grow up with wealth. Didn't nobody pay me. I worked for this. Sweat, blood, tears. I earn every dime I get. I worked for this. And you think I'm about to get this up for some foolishness? Have you lost your mind? You work for this championship. You work for this. You put in time. This is not the time to lose your mind. This is the time to go all in.
all in on three. One, two, three. Come on, one, two, three. Come on, one, two, three. Time to go all in. Success, guys, a very, very lonely road, man. Very few people are willing to endure the pain, the sacrifice, and the diligence to be successful. It's an uphill battle. And along that road, you're not going to see too many friends. You're going to see your shadow most often. You got to trust in the heart of hearts, inside what you're doing, what you believe in. It's a worthy cause, a winnable fight. See, the thing is, for many people, they've tried the same path you're on, and they failed. As you walk this journey, you're going to see carcasses all over the place of people that didn't quite have it. That should inspire you, but you got further than that person, than that person. But you're not looking to get further than them, you're looking to finish. How do you know you're on the right path? Where do you go to ensure that? Success. Many will love you for it. The majority will hate you. Because your success makes them feel insufficient in their current endeavor. Reminds them of where they could have done it but they came up short and how they didn't revisit it. Where they went at it and failed. And failure is what stood and never revisited it again. The difference between a winner and a loser, the failure is there every single time. It's just the winner gets back up and does it again. It does it again until it goes his way. So now you're down that path and you're all alone. How do you know you're on the right path? How do you know what you're doing is in the right direction? It's not the title that makes you. It's not the success that makes you. The character defines the success, defines the theme, and it starts right there. Championships aren't won in the theater or the arena. They're won in the thousands of hours in the training room, in the labs, in the 5 a.m. runs, and it's raining when everyone else is sleeping. That's when it's won. The heart of a champion is a light switch that's always on. It doesn't go on and off if someone's watching. It's constant. It's how you look at something. If your name's attached to it, that you do it right. The best of your ability every single time. in the dark, was born in the dark, shaped by the dark, molded by the dark. Some of you were soft, but you were born in the dark, and now you're soft. Every time you come up to a challenge, you quit, you surrender, you give up, you give in. Every single thing I go through, I remember I was homeless, and I draw from it. Every single time I'm going through pain, I remember that I've gone through pain since I was a kid. I draw from it. Recycle your pain. And the last pick is... They didn't call my name. Told me it was over. But I've been deaf since I was three. So I didn't listen. Get something from it. You're already in pain. Use it. Do something with it. Allow it to take you to the next level. Allow your pain to push you to greatness. Some of you, your success has messed you up. You so successful now, you saw. Your success has not benefited you. You've not grown as a result of being successful. You've lost your bite. You're not hungry anymore. Your success is damaging you. Are you hearing me? Some of you have been knocked out by life and you got up and saw the blood and you, ah, he hit. Sometimes in life, you have to hit back. It's not always going to be easy. They're not going to give it to you. They're not going to give you success. They're not going to put it on the platter. But if you're willing to work for it, if you're willing to put the sweat, the blood, the tears, if you're willing to earn it, they don't give away Bentley. They're never on sale.
If you got a dream, you're willing to go for it and you refuse to quit, dreams do come true. If you don't like the way your career is or your business is, change it. If you don't like your body, change it. If you don't like your relationship, change you first. Because if you change it, you'll bring you to the next one. If you want to change anything in your life, you have the choice. Everything in our life changes the moment we make a decision. Why pay the price? Why work this hard? Why go this far? Why try to learn this much? That's a good question, why? And you're the only one personally that can answer that question for yourself. You've got to have your own list of whys. People have million dollar and billion dollar ideas daily and you have to trust your gut and go for it. And if you fail at it, that's great. I mean, you know, I wish I was there to high five you because it just means, you know, nudge, nudge, change something, do something a little bit different. I mean, every failure is definitely a gift and it just should not stop us in our tracks. You know, the wealthiest place on the planet, a minister said recently, and it was so true, is not the gold mines in the various areas of the world or the diamond mines. The wealthiest place on the planet is the graveyard. Because in the graveyard, we will find inventions that we never, ever were exposed to. Ideas, dreams that never became reality. Hopes and aspirations that were never acted upon. Because most people allow that inner conversation, for whatever reason, to keep them from ever pursuing their goals. What's it gonna feel like? What's it gonna taste like? What's it gonna smell like? What's it gonna be like when I finally make my dream come true? You get strong inside. You start believing. You start walking differently. You start talking differently. People can see in your eyes. And you start getting strong. You become like a guided missile that has its, its coordinates that it's just not gonna, it's not gonna miss. Might have to make a little dip and turn once in a while, but it's gonna hit that mark. You get so strong. And so you wanna do that. Start thinking about it. What's it gonna be like? What's it gonna taste like? What's it gonna smell like? When I finally make that dream come true, or whatever that dream might be for you. Somebody say, E, what's your alarm clock? My passion. My dreams wake me up. I don't need no alarm clock. I'm going to bed pissed that I gotta go to bed. I'm mad at my body. I'm like, we still had three more hours of work, you know. Some of you going to sleep and you don't deserve to be, you don't deserve rest. You lazy, you don't deserve rest. Rest is for people who work. You ain't doing nothing. Every day you chilling. Right? You got you only go to sleep when you've done something. Some of y'all just need to be up, you need insomnia. You just need to stay up all the time. You ain't doing nothing. You need to know your why. And my why wakes me up every single morning. But is a dream killer. That a lot of things that we want to do, a lot of places we would like to go, a lot of things we would like to experience, and we just stop at but, and we build a case. In fact, I was reading something the other day that, that talked about but, it says but is an argument for our limitations, and when we argue for our limitations, we get to keep them. Don't be afraid to fail. Get out there and do your My invitation is always go and experience life instead of reading about it. Go and experience life instead of asking someone else to tell you how to live life. Go out there and fail. Go out there and scrape your knees. Go out there and do the wrong thing. That way you now have an experience that acts as a tool to support you in the building of your life. A lot of people out there make the same mistake you made. The worst thing you can do is give up now and give up and quit. What you can do is bounce back. What you can do is be resilient. What you can do is turn that whole thing around. You hear what I'm saying? Become great. Become great.
was there to push people beyond what's expected of them. I believe that is an absolute necessity. Otherwise, we're depriving the world the next Charlie Parker. But is there a line? You know, maybe you go too far and you discourage the next Charlie Parker from ever becoming Charlie Parker? No, man, no. Because the next Charlie Parker would never be discouraged. How one uses one's attention, moment to moment, largely determines what kind of person one becomes. Our minds and lives are largely shaped by how we use them. We have a decision that we can make in terms of the input that we're going to put in. But you can't expect to be great if you have an average week, if you have average input, if you have an average weekend. You're putting in 40 hours during the week and you expect to be great? You have this sense of entitlement inside you? No, your input needs to be great. Your input needs to excel. Your input needs to be phenomenal, outstanding compared to what everybody else's is. That means the time that you put in, the effort that you put in, all of that sweat equity. What are you investing? What are you doing different? You need to stop being so afraid of being uncomfortable. When you get the little voices that come on, the self-doubts that say, I don't know if I could do it. Your brain is a survival mechanism. So it's always going to pick the easier alternative. When something is challenging, when there's something hard, it's going to always pick the easier choice. Well, we don't have to do it. Because it's not part of your survival. But being great is not about surviving. It's about thriving. Fight and fight and fight and fight. If you want to be great, change your input. Something's got to be different in terms of the time you put in and the effort you put in. That needs to be great for you to be great. The only thing keeping you from getting what you want is the story you keep telling yourself about why you don't have it. And if you don't have what you want, stop telling yourself the story because you don't have the money, you don't have the time, that's bullshit. It's because you haven't committed yourself where you would burn your boats. If you want to take the fucking island, burn your fucking boats. No more excuses, just adjustments. And remember, people, when they're going to either die or succeed, tend to succeed. You're not average. Why you being average? You're not average. Why you being good when you're not good? You great. When you gonna step up to the plate? Because there's some things in life you're not going to get. They're not coming to you. You gotta go take it. There's some stuff if you gonna get it, you gotta will to get it. You gotta get your weight up. Get your weight up. Execution is worship. So from this day forward, we will execute. I will execute. I will execute. Somehow we've come to believe that greatness is a gift, reserved for a chosen few. You can forget that. Greatness is not some rare DNA strand. We're all capable of it. All of us. I've often said that I wished people could realize all their dreams and wealth and fame and so that they could see that it's not where you're going to find your sense of completion. I can tell you from experience, the effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. How will you serve the world? What do they need that your talent can provide? That's all you have to figure out. Why not take a chance on faith as well? Not religion, but faith. 
Not hope, but faith. I don't believe in hope. Hope is a beggar. Hope walks through the fire and faith leaps over it. You are ready and able to do beautiful things in this world. As a child, my parents always told me, you could be whatever you want to be. You could do whatever you want to do. But I didn't totally believe it. Yet I went out in the world and I carried myself and I held my head high and I stood there and I looked people in their eyes and I talked to people as if I was deservant of everything that this planet has to offer. Confucius said one time, he who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. It's time to change. It's time to walk down another street. What is your dream? I just want to ask you one question. What do you want to be remembered for? I hope you want to be remembered as a grinder. Someone who fights their way through all the things that they go through. Do not give up on your marriage. Do not give up in school. Do not give up on your goals and your dreams. You want to be an athlete. Grind. You want to open up that company, that organization. Grind. Nobody has to convince you to do what you have to do. You wake up early. You stay up late. You will do whatever you have to do to get where you need to go. Who gave me five grand when I was at Michigan State doing my program? I didn't get a, I didn't have no budget. But I didn't need a budget. I had a dream. I didn't need no help. The president never came and said to me, E.T., we're going to help your program for this institution blow up. The president never came, and I never quit. I never gave up. Why? Because it wasn't her dream in the first place to take care of a group of kids from the D. It was my dream. It was my goal. I don't expect you to do, I don't expect you to believe in my dream like I believe in my dream. And the problem with some of y'all is you want somebody else to support your dream. It's yours. I don't owe you a dime. It's your dream. If you want it to happen, get your butt up and make it happen. If you want it to happen, rise and grind. The warfare is in your mind. It's not in your checkbook. It's not in your savings account. It's not on your job. The fight that you got to fight is in your mind. There is always someone on your heels. There's always someone with talent. There's always someone hungry to take what you have. So where's that differentiating factor? It's within. It's in your why. If you're number one, you got to act like you're still number two trying to get there. These people are relentless. You are always replaceable in the office, on your roster spot. And every year I tell you, there's always going to be someone with more ability, with more privilege. So where's your competitive edge? It's up to you to muster it up and revisit your past where you weren't the top dog. Revisit that pain. Check yourself for that hunger and deliver it from the inside out. Outthink them, outsmart them, outwork them. I will not be outworked, period. Well, one of the things about life, you're going to get hurt, you're going to make some mistakes, you're going to fail your way to success. But you've got to be willing to experiment, you've got to be willing to push yourself, you've got to be willing to challenge yourself by putting yourself in a perpetual state of discomfort. It's time to put your best foot forward. It's not about just putting in hours, it's about what are you doing with those hours you're putting in. Stay focused in accomplishing every single goal every single day we're trying to reach a pinnacle point nobody else can give you the effort that you need nobody tells you when you're successful you know when you're successful you know if you're putting in enough time to become great you know when you're good and there will be times when you feel like giving up you just got to go one more mile you got to go one more day and i guarantee you'll find that motivation that you need there's something that's built on the inside of you that man cannot give you. Your life, your health, your business, the situation that you're going through, everything that you've been through should push you to your destiny. Today is the day. I needed to take a second 
Sometimes you can try so hard at something. Sometimes you can be so, so prepared and still fail. And with every time you fail, it's painful. It causes sadness. And especially as I saw last night, it causes disappointment. I've often said a man's character is not judged after he celebrates a victory, by, but, but by what he does when his back is against the wall. So no matter how great the setback, how severe the failure, you never give up. You never give up. You pick yourself up, you brush yourself off, you push forward, you move on, you adapt, you overcome. That is what I believe. Inch by inch, play by play, till we're finished. We're in hell right now. Believe me. And we can stay here, get the shit kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell. One inch at a time. Now, I can't do it for you. You know, when you get old in life, things get taken from you. I mean, that's, that's, that's part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff. You find out that life's this game of inches. The margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. On this team, we fight for that inch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. We claw with our fingernails for that inch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, that's going to make the fucking difference between winning between living and dying. I'll tell you this, in any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die who's going to win that inch. And I know if I'm going to have any life in it, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that inch. Because that's what living is. I've always thought that each person invented himself for whatever reasons, through whatever circumstance, through whatever he has gone through, that we are each a figment of our own imagination. Develop the habits. You've got the brain power, you've got the energy, but develop the habits of success. I'm actually starting to feel pretty bad for you because I look at my life and it is surrounded by so much beauty. You can't see. Is that fair? The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. But it started with a vision. I don't care what happens in your life. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care where you are. 
every single day you wake up, if you're going to have energy, if you're going to have passion, if you're going to have drive, every day you wake up, you got to start with that vision. It's nice to get a load of money. It's nice to get a load of attention. I went to bed last night. Had all these ideas about how you're going to get up this morning. It's going to be different. Things are going to be different. Today you're going to start. Start taking steps towards doing some of those projects. And you know get you closer to living that dream life you keep playing over and over in your head. Different from the practical life that you've got to get up and meet every day. To go to the cubicle infested world and work a job just to pay the bills. The gas in the gas tank to take you places where you don't really want to go to be around people you don't enjoy being around. Put groceries in a refrigerator. Groceries that keep you fat and lazy, keep you away from being healthy and fit in your life. What wakes you up? What drives you? Why are you playing this game? Pay the mortgage on a house that doesn't inspire you. It's just a nuisance and you hate coming home to. And you know what makes it even worse? Is that you cower. Before you got from the bedroom to the kitchen, Mr. Ugly was there. Mr. Resistance, right in your ass, telling you what you were going to do different than what you want to do and what the inner voice inside of you tells you you need to do with your life. Telling you that those things that you believe matter and have a purpose in your life really don't. That the silly, the superficial, the stupid does. Those of you right now, you should have cut a CD. You should have wrote a book. You should have got in school and got that degree. You should have started your own business. There's so many things you should have done. You should have done, but you didn't do it because you're scared. You believe that, that you said scared of what? E, I ain't scared. You are scared. You are scared. You're scared of failure. You're scared to make a mistake. You're scared that you're not perfect. You've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. And I realized somebody else trying to do exactly what I'm trying to do. Are you a gazelle or are you a lion? wakes you up? What drives you? Why are you playing this game? But when the lion wakes up, it don't need nobody to push it. It pushes itself. Mr. Resistance will be there every morning, morning, noon, and night. And while you are sleeping, right in your ass, kicking your ass, unless you turn around and you start throwing punches.
What's your purpose for playing this game? Why are you doing what you're doing? And when you know why you're doing what you're doing, you saw my t-shirt, no alarm clock needed. My passion wakes me up. I got up at three o'clock this morning, no clock. I ain't used a clock in 20 years. My passion wakes me up. My tribe wakes me up. What wakes you up? What drives you? Why are you playing this game? Are you a gazelle? Are you a lion? And I'm telling you today, you ain't got to be perfect. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't have to be perfect to get what you want, to do what you want, to have what you want, to be what you want. You don't have to be perfect. It's a lie. I'm trying to perfect the now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm trying to look at each second and make sure I'm doing something in each second. I want to make sure each minute I'm doing something in each minute. I want to make sure every hour I'm doing something every hour. I want to make sure in that day I'm getting something done. On Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, that I'm effective. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect, but what you have to do is perfect the day. That's what I want you to do. You'll never be perfect. As long as you're alive, there's always progress. You can always get better, but listen to me. I want you to practice perfecting the 24 hours. You hear me? 60 minutes in a day. 1,440 seconds. That's what I want you to concentrate on. I want you to concentrate on the now. When I wake up in the morning and I'm working on my speech, when I get up in the morning and I'm answering a phone call, when I get up in the morning, listen to me very closely, and I'm writing down every idea I dreamed about, every movie, I can't even watch a movie now, I can't even listen to music without writing something down. I get my iPod, I get my, I get my iPhone, and I'm writing everything down. It's right here, everything. And so guess what? Guess what? Every week I make, every time I'm practicing, every book I read, everything I do to make me better. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm actually in a meeting without even being in a meeting. You missed what I just said. I'm actually in a meeting when people are sitting around and said they need to bring Eric Thomas in. They don't even know I'm in the room with them. You said, E, how are you in San Francisco? How are you in Los Angeles? How are you in Detroit? How are you in Chicago? You can't be in every place. Yes, I can. By doing what I'm supposed to do with each second, by doing what I'm supposed to do with each minute, by doing what I'm supposed to do with each hour, I need you to stop trying to do it big. I need you to fall in love with small, and guess what? Big gonna be attracted to you. The now. You master the now. You become an expert of the now. I'm guaranteeing you, you gonna blow up. There is something better for you to do with your time than even being here. Right now, I am Mr. Resistance. I'm distracting you from doing the work you need to do. Get the fuck out of here and do the work of your life. Imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the dreams given to you by life, the ideas that you never acted on, the talents, the gifts, the abilities that you never used. And there they are, standing around your bed, looking at you with large angry eyes saying we came to you and only you could have given us life and now we must die with you forever 
And the question is, if you die this very moment, what will die with you? What dreams, what ideas, what talent, what greatness that you showed up to bring? Don't allow fear of failure and the attractiveness of playing it safe in life to draw you in. You can't get out of life alive. You've got to die to leave here. You have something special. You have greatness within you. You were born phenomenal. Listen to me. You were literally born phenomenal, like the whole process. Like there are like five million options in the womb. We're not talking about one sperm cell and one egg. There are five million options. And out of five million options, you made it. They've got to make their way through a complex series of environments in a, in a kind of warfare. It is warfare. Innately, innately, everything about you is great. Everything about you is phenomenal. But the problem is you have consciously chosen to be average. You are average in school. You are average at your workplace. Everything you do is average, and not because it's average, but because you made a decision. You made a choice to be average. Why? Because the people around you are average. Or maybe you grew up in an average environment, or went to an average school, or you worked for an average company, so you decided. You've decided to go against who you are. You've decided to go against who you are. So that's why you go to the basketball games. That's why you spend hours watching your favorite athlete, right? Right? Because when you watch them, you watch them. There's something about you that's attracted to that greatness because there's something in you that's great. That's why, that's why you put those headphones on and you just shut the whole world out and you listen to your favorite artist. You listen to them sing or you listen to them rap. And, and deep down inside, you hurt when you listen because it should be you. You are attracted to greatness because greatness is all in you. But it's easier to watch greatness. It's easier to go see greatness than it is to put in the time, to put in the energy, to, to discipline yourself, to sacrifice. It's easier. And so that's why you average. And so you frustrate it because you're not living like you should live. No, you don't have what you should have. You're not being who you should be. And I would hate to live and die and never know what would happen if I ever committed myself to anything. But you've never seen what you could be if you threw your whole self at your dream. It's time for you to look within yourself and decide that I'm in charge of my destiny. I'm in charge here. And when you decide I'm going to do it, the universe will yield to you. And life will never be the same again. Live your dream. The kingdom of God is within man, not one man, nor a group of men, but in all men, in you. You, the people, have the power. The power to create machines, the power to create happiness. You, the people, have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. And that if you decide that my life deserves my developing this what I do well, and becoming the best at it and mastering myself and seeing what I have within me. I grant you, you'll never ever be without. I'm telling you, greatness is here. Greatness is upon you. You better act like this. When you want something out of life, you've got to be willing to go into action. Don't wait around for things to be just right. Don't wait for things to be perfect. Don't wait for the ideal situation. It will never be ideal. There will always be a reason. Well, as soon as the children grow up, as soon as I pay my bills, as soon as I get my divorce, all kinds, as soon as I get enough money together, do what you can where you are with what you have and never be satisfied a lot of people never take a chance in life they don't want to take any chances they want the situation to be ideal see that's not walking by faith that's walking by sight if i can see it i'll do it 
No, 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 no. That's a lot of people say, if I can see it, I believe it. No, 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 no. If you believe it, you can see it. And don't be disturbed because no one else can see it. That's not unusual. That is ordinary. But because you want some different kind of results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. If you want unreasonable results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you don't judge according to appearances. Part of being unreasonable, you can see it because you believe it. That's part of being unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you're like Paul who said, you must have the faith to call forth those things that be not as though they were. That's part of being unreasonable. The other thing is that one of the keys to self-motivation that empowers you is that you want to find a cause larger than yourself. Find something that you can contribute to. Find something that you can make a difference because you can. Part of what feeds your larger vision, part of what gives you a reason for being, part of what gives you your life is being able to give something back. Say, I can't afford to give anything. You can't afford not to give. Give your time. Give your talent. There's nothing just to go over and lick envelopes. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going over there. It's part of my tithing in the universe. Once you develop that, that special sense of mission, and that's what you develop when you're part of a larger cause than yourself, it drives you. You don't need an alarm clock to get up in the morning. You have special power. You'll go places and folk will like to be around you. They will know there's something different about you. When you go in, they'll say, hey, that's somebody important. I want to know who you are. I just want to be near you. That energy that you have, that consciousness that you will embody will affect everybody around you. The next thing is, is that you want to create a home court advantage for yourself. You've got to be aware of who you have around you. So you want to be selective. Have friends that will enable you to grow. So, according to the relationships that you develop, we grow from people and projects. And the relationships that you develop can enhance and can enrich your life, or they can drain you. I know many talented people who had a great deal of potential, but because they didn't surround themselves with other people that will inspire them to transcend themselves, they never realize their greatness and they will end up going to their grave with all their good stuff still in them. So you want to look at your relationships, the people that you're involved with, the people that you communicate with all, most often, and you want to ask yourself the question, what am I becoming because of this relationship? Does it inspire me? Am I motivated? Am I encouraged? Am I driven to develop myself? Am I seeking my own greatness? What kind of person am I becoming because of this relationship? Am I becoming more cynical and negative about life? Ask yourself that. The next thing is, you've got to say yes to your life. You've got to say yes. Yes to my dreams. Yes to me. Yes. I can make it. Yes, I can. Doesn't matter how many failures I've made. Doesn't matter how many mistakes I've endured. Doesn't matter about my defeats. Doesn't matter about what I've done. Yes. Yes. I don't care about the fact I'm in a hole now. Doesn't matter about where I am. Yes. The last chapter to my life has not been written yet. If you judge me now, you'll judge me prematurely. I haven't exposed all my stuff yet. I'm still in the process of transforming my life. I'm still in the process of becoming. Don't fail yourself today. 
It's a beautiful thing when you go to bed at night, getting ready to close your eyes, days over, taking a breath. Because you've got all these grand visions in your head that tomorrow it's going to be different. We get one opportunity in life, one chance in life to do whatever you're going to do, to lay your foundation, to make whatever mark you're going to make. You're going to get up, you're going to get some exercise because you know it's good for your body. And at that moment, I, a voice came over me and it said, look up. Get up and don't ever give up. So now you got to go out and show them that I'm a different creature now than I was five minutes ago. Some people, well, I guess ain't nobody home. Well, if they had the determination just to keep on knocking, it's a funny thing about life. If you're home one day and someone is knocking on the door, you say, I don't want to be bothered today. Say, what is it? What do you want? And that's how you've got to be about your dream. Keep on knocking. Everything you did today, we're going to do today, was going to have a purpose behind it. It was going to matter. Legacy you gonna leave. Leave your legacy. Every day is an opportunity for you to start taking control of your life. Didn't do the things you said you were gonna do at the beginning of the day. It doesn't matter anymore because the time is gone. You can't get it back and you gotta get some sleep, man. You gotta go to dreamland.